A very warm hello and welcome to this webinar on a practical guideline on energy efficiency in football within the SDG Striker project. This is currently a very exciting and diverse topic, the focus in this webinar is on the areas of renovations and buildings. In addition, the topic of energy poverty will also be addressed in this webinar. SDG Striker aims to increase organizational capacity for good governance in grassroots sports organizations by supporting the implementation and communication of the Sustainable Development Goals. Relevant research findings of sustainability aspects have been compiled on three focal areas, energy poverty, energy efficiency, photovoltaics, and green turf filler. The funding of the project by the European Commission under the Erasmus Plus program is gratefully acknowledged. The 17 SDGs are shown in this figure. It is a shared concept for peace and prosperity for people and the planet. In total, they include 169 targets that are assigned to the different goals. According to the United Nations Sports in general is an important enabler for sustainable development. In order to fulfill the SDGs, it is essential to have a healthy society and physical activity and sports are helpful to achieve these goals. Physical activity is essential for improving health and contributes to both the prevention and treatment of disease. People who are physically active and participate in sports benefit on a social, physical and mental level. Sport does not only benefit the physical fitness, but it can also communicate a healthy lifestyle to children. Moreover, physical exercises also have a positive effect on mental health, self-esteem and self-confidence. Sport also promotes tolerance and respect and it contributes to the empowerment of women and young people, individuals and communities. So why can football accelerate SDG spread? All over the world millions of adults and their families visit sports stadiums each year and sport facilities serve as an emotionally captivating scape, inspiring lifelong memories. Consequently this is the ideal possibility for the fans to become aware of on-site solar power generation, energy and water-efficient building design, zero-waste practices, recycling and composting programs, etc. Related to that are minimized environmental impacts, financial benefits as well as brand benefits, etc. One pilot of the SDG project addresses energy efficiency and energy poverty and it is located in Scotland. Therefore, as it can be seen in this figure 6 out of 17 SDGs are addressed with this pilot, the topic of energy poverty addresses goal 1, no poverty, and goal 10, reduced inequalities, and the topic of energy efficiency deals with goal 7, affordable and clean energy, goal 12, responsible consumption and production, and goal 13, climate action. Furthermore, goal 17, partnership for the goals, is addressed by the Scottish pilot through interlinkage and the variety of activities. Reducing the environmental impact of energy-consuming systems requires two synergistic approaches. First, it is necessary to reduce energy losses and thus the overall energy consumption through implementation of energy efficiency measures, and second, the remaining energy demand can be provided via renewable energy sources. Each case needs to be assessed individually in order to identify the weak points and the most promising optimization potentials. For football facilities, the following relevant areas of improvement should be considered. Lighting systems. HVAC, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, systems. Building automation or building management systems. The building envelope. And electrical equipment as well as specific technologies for sports facilities. For the lighting systems of football buildings, different requirements are of importance, such as aspects of illuminance, uniformity, glare control and chromatic properties of the source used. These requirements vary based on the level of competition of the football club. Regarding to lighting there are simple possibilities to reduce the energy consumption and also the related costs. Convert existing lighting systems to LED with high efficiency LED light. Flood lighting and internal lighting. Split and adapt the system to allow multiple scenarios, e.g. three or four scenarios can be set for the playground for different purpose, training sessions, matches and TV footage. Introduce an automated lighting management system including the actual monitoring of lighting levels, occupancy, and daylight sensor. The amount of energy and cost savings will be higher the more fixtures that are replaced and if hours of use or costs of electricity are higher. LED lights offer several advantages compared to conventional technologies related not only related to energy efficiency, but regarding service life, 
costs, color, operating times, focus, light pollution, and the environment. Major benefits are listed here. The lifespan of LED lights is four or five times higher than other technologies. They also lose their lumen efficiency much slower over time when compared to metal halide high-intensity discharge technology, offering better performances for a much longer lifespan. This translates into lower maintenance and material replacement costs, as well as less waste for disposal. Replacing conventional lamps with modern LED floodlights and lamps can lead to up to 35% energy savings. LED systems generally cost more than other solutions, but they offer a better return on investment during the lifespan of the system thanks to energy savings and the reduction in maintenance costs and need of replacement. LED lights offer higher television lighting consistency index than other technologies. Color rendering is especially important in sports facilities that host HD TV footage and broadcasts. Unlike other technologies, LED solutions emit 100% of the luminous flux directly upon switching on. They don't take time to warm up. Other technologies emit omnidirectional light, they tend to illuminate beyond the specific area, even with spotlights, which means that much of the light emitted is scattered and wasted. The directional lighting capability of LED lights naturally helps to minimize light pollution. Additionally, the use of reflective visors can further reduce light scattering and its negative impact on the environment around sports facilities. In addition to minimizing light pollution, LED solutions require significantly less energy to operate than other technologies. As a result, they create fewer greenhouse gas emissions. When adapting lighting solutions, the purpose of the lighting needs to be taken into account and of course, there can be very different requirements depending on the league of the respective club. For every venue an individual solution has to be evaluated and designed. For the pitch, precision LED lighting installations with flexible controls are advisable. Regarding the seatings a balanced lighting to maximize visibility for spectators is recommended. For indoor areas controls and sensors are recommended to avoid energy wasted and to fit user needs. As far as outdoor areas are concerned, adequate lighting is required especially to provide safety and comfort. For flood lighting it is advisable to install modular LED floodlights that can be used even in dual or triple configurations, with different power outputs and light distributions. Illuminance levels must be configured for each camera position if needed. Artificial light sources should simulate natural daylight. The color rendering is recommended to be greater than 80. You should also implement a continuous LED light level adaptation. Additionally, a flicker factor under 6% is highly recommended. Adequate lighting control technologies ensure long-term installation performance and easy maintenance. For lighting design of interior spaces, the following points should be taken into consideration. Install proper control systems using smart swaths, daylight controls and motion sensors able to avoid the use of lights when not needed. Identification of lighting level is required by the specific use of the space and according to tasks and human factors as well as considering the availability of daylighting. Illuminance levels must be configured for each space needs. Artificial light sources should simulate natural daylight. Considerations on surfaces characteristics and glare control measures are recommendable. Consider the optimal color of the lamps, taking into account correlated color temperature and color rendering index. Lighting controls can be applied to stadiums, training centers, or club headquarters. Common types of lighting controls are Dimmer controls Occupancy sensor controls Timer controls Daylight sensors Key elements for lighting controls of internal spaces are Identification of spaces and relevant lighting levels required Considerations related to space usage, frequency of use, type of users Analysis of the internal geometry of spaces and daylight levels is the top level of design options. Another important possibility to become more energy efficient is in the field of heating, cooling, ventilation and domestic hot water production. This represents a consistent area of improvement for any buildings. A complete renovation of the HVAC system, in the case of large and complex buildings, can represent a huge and expensive intervention that should be evaluated carefully. 
systems installed in the existing buildings are often difficult to retrofit and an entire system renovation can require a deep refurbishment as the components are spread through the whole building in different spaces. But, single equipment can be replaced more easily with good results in terms of energy efficiency improvement. The selection of type and capacity of generators must be carefully evaluated considering the heating and cooling systems, their operating temperatures, the insulation provided to the building envelope and the availability of a suitable heat source. Here are some recommendations for efficient heating, cooling, ventilation and domestic hot water production. The detailed design of HVAC systems and key components depend on particular building cases, local characteristics, national codes. To make correct sizing of a new HVAC system, the characteristics and the main parameters of all elements must be correctly calculated and assessed including for example, maximal airflow of ventilation units, maximum capacity of heating and cooling equipment, ducts and pipes diameters, etc. Another possibility to become more energy efficient is in the field of building automation and building management systems. Building management system is one of the most powerful tools in building engineering services. It is primarily used to monitor and control electromechanical systems, extra low voltage systems, elevators, lighting, etc. It ensures efficient utilization of resources, energy efficiency, improved comfort and safety for the users. A BMS includes subsystems for managing its various components, including system for commercial accounting of heat consumption, automatic equipment for heating and cooling supply systems, water supply and plumbing systems, automatic equipment for lightning and electric power supply systems, smoke removal, fire alarm system and other emergency warning systems, security burglar signaling system, access monitoring and control system, other low current systems. Typically, systems linked to a BMS represent 40% of a building's energy usage and up to 70% if lighting is included. Therefore, the potential energy and cost savings may be considerable. To improve the performance of a building management system, all the coolers and heat pumps will have built-in temperature sensors for monitoring the temperature and hence it is not necessary to add additional temperature sensors. Status of pumps also to be taken from mechanical side by installing DP switches across pumps rather than relying on electrical starters, as starter will always show on status when switched on, but sometimes the pump may not be really running due to some mechanical failure. Instead of integrating the main fire alarm panel fully into BMS, it is better to assign two control relays, one for supervisory monitoring and one for fire alarm monitoring in the fire alarm system. By monitoring the status of these control relays, BMS operators could come to know the main two status. Additionally, the BMS software should be customized to depict and process the data in a facility management perspective. Some of the specific functions required are Report energy consumption values from utility meters on a daily cutoff hour. Report trends of parameters and status in HVAC systems, hot water systems, ambient conditions, etc. Trip, fault and stop status of equipment to be popped up in the BMS workstation with an audiovisual alarm. Automatic printing of alarms and events through a printer attached to BMS workstation. Preventive maintenance schedule alarms based on the operating hours of the equipment. These functionalities in the software would enable the facility management team to analyze the energy usage patterns, variation of parameters at different operating conditions, and allow for proper planning and efficient utilization of energy and resources. Another possibility to become more energy efficient is in the field of building envelope. An adequate renovation of the building envelope reduces the energy demand of the building for both heating and cooling. The quality and energy performance of building envelopes are the most important factors that affect the energy consumed by heating and cooling equipment. In addition to an improved energy performance, building envelope improvements can also occupant comfort through more stable temperatures and better control of lighting, e.g. glare reduction. Energy loss through the building envelope is highly variable and depends on numerous factors such as building age and type, climate, construction technique, orientation, geographical location, and occupant behavior. The solutions to improve performance are also varied and highly dependent on the specific case.
In order to improve energy performance in winter, solar gains should be maximized and thermal losses minimized mainly using thermal insulation. During summer internal and external gains should be minimized to not overcharge the cooling system using thermal mass, efficient glazing, insulation, shading, reflective surfaces and natural ventilation. Both needs should be carefully balanced based on the actual needs of the building. Some recommendations regarding the building envelope. Thermal insulation reduces heat gain slash loss through the building envelope and maintains a comfortable indoor environment. There are several common types of insulation, fiberglass, mineral wool, cellulose, polyurethane foam, expanded polystyrene EPS, rigid foam board, and spray foam, etc. The type and the thickness of insulation needed varies considerably according to the climate zone. For thermal insulation, the following parameters have to be considered. Climatic parameters. Material properties of the existing envelope. Existing thermal bridges and possibilities to solve them. Use of the internal spaces. Thermal performances of the insulation. To follow up on the improvement of the insulation. Apply external insulation to achieve higher performances reducing thermal bridges with little risk of moisture problems. Internal insulation must be installed carefully and must not create a situation where the moisture levels in the wall can rise. Complete insulation of walls, roofs and ground slabs is recommended in cold climates. For warm climates it may be more efficient to isolate only walls together with the implementation of cool roofs. Sustainability, choose insulation materials with high percentage of recycled materials and select products with responsible sourcing certification. To choose the right material, it is important to analyze how it responds to moisture, whether it meets fire-safe regulations and whether the thickness meets the national standards. High-performance windows help improving thermal insulation of the envelope while ensuring appropriate level of natural lighting and ventilation. A wide range of high-performance windows with different type of frames, glass, glazing and cavity fill is available. The following parameters should be considered for the selection of appropriate windows. We recommend to choose windows and shading devices based on facade orientation balancing the thermal transmittance related to U-value with the solar heat gain coefficient and the visible transmittance. In general, high U-value are recommended for north facades while high solar heat gain coefficient are recommended for south facades. A cool roof is able to reflect solar heat and keep roof surfaces cool under the sun. There are reflective and emissive materials used to reflect solar radiation back into the atmosphere. As the roof stays cooler, the amount of heat transferred to the internal spaces of the building is reduced keeping a cooler and more constant temperature in the interior. When correctly installed with air sealing, each type of insulation can deliver comfort and lower energy bills. To get the biggest savings, the easiest place to add insulation is usually in the attic. Green roofs incorporate plants into the roof assembly adding insulating value, reducing storm water runoff, cool the building interior and the surrounding area, provide habitats for birds and insect. Several types of green roofs with varying coverings, complexity and scopes can be established on rooftops. Implementing a green roof on an existing building needs to be carefully evaluated under the structural and seismic point, e.g. load-bearing capacity of the building, need for structural modifications. In order to choose the correct plants, the following parameters should be considered. Weather data. Slope gradient of the roof. Weight of the whole system. Water requirement and growing medium of the species. Water retention capacity. The following recommendations can be provided regarding green roofs. The setup strongly depends on the site conditions, load-bearing capacity, flat or relatively flat roofs, irrigation system, adequate weather conditions and rainfall to support the growth of the plants. Select locally appropriate native species resistant to climate agents and potential droughts. Apply an adequate protective cover under the trays to protect the roof covering. Maintenance of green roofs is crucial, especially in the first five years. Technologies and equipment with relevant energy consumption could be present in stadiums or training centers. If they are replaced with new advanced technologies this offers challenges and opportunities to improve the energy efficiency of the system. Wherever possible, any features or equipment that require extensive or costly maintenance should be avoided. 
severe weather conditions or failure to undertake adequate maintenance could make it necessary to use technologies such as undersoil heating and artificial lighting to growth grass. These are extremely energy-intensive systems and represent a field in which to investigate opportunities and solutions for energy improvement and financial savings. Recommendations for undersoil heating are that the heating cables should be installed 25 to 30 centimeters below the surface to avoid cable damage. Distance between the wires depends on the required watt per square meter and typically is about 15 to 25 centimeters. An adequate drainage system is needed. Less water means less heating needs. In order to keep the soil warm and moist, the area should be covered with plastic or a similar material when it is not in use. To limit energy consumption, it is essential to adopt intelligent control systems that heat the undersoil heating only as long as it is necessary to prevent the soil from freezing. A photovoltaic system in combination with battery storage can power the electric undersoil heating system, even at night, without expensive external power. Recommendations for artificial lights for grass growth are Artificial lights to improve the growth of natural and mixed synthetic grass in football stadiums. It also provides a turf heating that favors the melting of snow and ice. A LED-based system allows groundskeepers to adjust the color of light to enhance photosynthesis. It is recommended for those climates and building configurations where natural sunlight and temperature are not sufficient to guarantee an adequate grass growth. High operating costs that can be reduced using a PD system to provide free electricity. Energy poverty is defined as the inability to access enough energy so that a person or family is comfortable at home without jeopardizing their income or ability to pay for other basic needs. It is caused by a combination of high energy prices, low income and low energy efficiency. Football clubs can address the topic of energy poverty within their community to create awareness and potentially also reduce energy poverty. Football clubs can address the topic of energy poverty within their community to create awareness and potentially also reduce energy poverty. Sometimes spending time outside one's home is a frequent coping mechanism to deal with energy deprivation. Football clubs give young people the opportunity to spend time outside their homes. Sport facilities provide energy services, such as hot showers, hair dryers. The creation of a safe network is vital to deal with the many inconveniences that arise from living in conditions of inequality. Good social relations can enable access to energy services by overcoming the dynamics of oppression and discrimination, e.g. overcoming linguistic barriers to understand the energy bills. Clubs can offer grants and facilitate the participation of low-income children, as low-income families often face financial barriers that limit children's sport participation, hence more money for energy is available for the families. Clubs could also provide workshops or consulting opportunities for their members on energy bills, energy efficiency in general and low-cost energy efficiency measures, accessing grant schemes or tips for positive behavior change. Creating awareness for the topic of energy poverty within the club and also outside, e.g. an awareness campaign. In a first steps, coaches, medical staff and educators could be educated about this and then they could hand on this information to the players, e.g. via workshops or discussions. With this information we are at the end of our webinar. We hope the information will help you and wish you best of luck in improving the energy efficiency of your sports facility and engage in the field of energy poverty. Leave no one behind. Please also consider the two other webinars from the SDG Striker Project and follow us on social media. The financial assistance provided by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union is gratefully acknowledged. This material is based upon the referenced work and the author make no warranty or assumes any liability or responsibility of any information regarding privately owned rights.